Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. No matter what you're doing this weekend, whether you celebrate Easter or not, I hope that you're using that time to fellowship with family and loved ones, uh, being able to put some differences aside and just take in the moment to spend some time with one another. Uh, I'm actually in, in the office just uh, getting some things done. And I wanted to talk about something that is current uh, and kind of hits close to home for a number of different reasons. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard uh, DMX, one of the most legendary rappers uh, alive uh, as of now, had a ma massive uh, major overdose last night and was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. He's being treated now for that overdose in ICU. And um, like I said, this one hits home, close to home for a number of reasons. Not gonna get in all into that, but um, this is the second near-death overdose that we are aware of. The first one was in 2016. Um, and he survived that and came out. And my prayers are that he definitely survives this particular uh, challenge and crisis. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to take a time, I want to take a little time to talk about the dynamics of addiction and the black community and celebrities and all of these little things that we give very little attention to but have a massive impact on how we move and operate and what it says about our collective uh, paradigms when it comes to how we live our lives. Uh, there's no question for anybody who's followed this brother throughout his career. Uh, there are very few uh, who has who have put their soul into their work and into their music at the level that this brother has. Very few. You may say Pop did it. You may say uh, Scarface did it. And there may be a few others. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, animation. I'm not talking about all that stuff. Yes, he was animated. I'm not talking. About, I'm talking about the depths of their pain, the depths of how they felt felt about what was going on in the world. He gave us a lot, and I don't think very many of us got it. Um, you know, outside of the banging music and the, the dope beats and everything else, we get caught up in. Uh, but he was pouring his soul out. He was sharing with you uh, the inner struggles. He was sharing with you the darkness that he treads on a daily basis. And very few got it. And the problem is we live in a world that elevates celebrities at a level that sees them beyond human uh, capacity. And we tend to look past the things we're going through. And Marion and I were talking, man, probably about six or seven months ago. We've mentioned it to one another in passing for years, but we got to really talking about it because we start to look at these different biopics popping up about the women uh, of the past, predominantly women. Uh, but when you look at some of the things that happens on Unsung, but like, you know, uh, we just recently got a, a real deep look into uh, Billie Holiday and, uh, and um, the true nature of her struggle and how much she really gave her heart to what she really believed in. Nina Simone, another one who gave a great deal and um, Dorothy Dandridge, and I can go on. There's this dark side to every last one of them. There's this trauma that seems to be present in the life of every last person. Some open up and share it. Some, li some lives are an open book, whether they want it to be or not. But we have literally become a people who have become addicted to feasting on trauma. 
if you really truly think about it, almost all of the uh, reality shows built on trauma. Built on trauma. Almost all of the reality shows built on trauma. It's a point now as this brother lays fighting for his life and it, while it's bigger than him, it really, really hits home uh, with me. <clears throat> but, and while I've never been addicted to anything, I've had family members who have suffered with addiction greatly. I've worked with a number of people who were fighting to overcome addiction. I have seen it from all different angles and it's just a part of the coping mechanism that we use to deal with the trauma that we don't know how to confront. That's why I've spent so much of my energy and time as a professional looking into evaluating, understanding, and trying to grasp ways to help people suffering with trauma from the little girl who was molested as a child, from the little boy who was abandoned by his father, to the more drastic, dark regions of what we experience as a people, not to mention what has been passed down epigenetically over the course of generation after generation of not only passed down trauma, but revisited trauma that we continue to deal with as we watch young black men die in the street, as we watch black men assault black women, as we watch the terror of what is total uh, antinomianism and chaos within our community, where we have no unique and special value in uh, value or any type of sense of values, interests, and principles that reflect what we say we want. You have to say, okay, we say we want empowerment. We say we want liberation. We say that we want to be everything that we know we were at one particular point in time, but we don't want to deal with the actions and behaviors within the community. There's this saying I quote often that says, um, that says, the enemy, uh, if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can cause us no harm. If there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can cause us no harm. The problem is we're so vulnerable to the enemy on the outside because we're struggling with so many demons on the inside. And DMX is simply the microcosm of today that, that totally exposes that we have a problem. He's not unique except for in the fact that we know who he is. There's a large group of us that are suffering at a level that's going to be catastrophic, not only to ourselves, but to the community. Why? Because we will not always implode. Some of us will explode and it will be, it will be experienced in some unbelievable catastrophic events. We see it every time a black man kills a black woman because he can't stand the idea of her leaving him because he isn't whole. He hasn't discovered who he is. He's still living his life being identified by what he has, so much so that he treated her as a possession, locked her down and probably abused her, if not physically, emotionally, and mentally, at a level that drove her away. And he can't even see that he's got to deal with the abandonment issues that are more, most likely at the core of that. We're not healing. And while I have some level of acknowledgement of the skill set and capabilities of Inyala Vinzant, I think one of the worst things I've ever saw, and I haven't, I haven't really did anything of watching her since, is how she ambushed this brother. I believe in intervention. I believe in calling a spade a spade. I believe in being honest with my clients. I don't sugarcoat anything, but I'm not there to tear them down and to break them. I'm not there to see that that's the last straw and think that if I push that straw down a little bit harder, that's going to make them stronger. I, I don't believe in that. I believe that that was one of the worst things that could ever happen. I believe that he needs to come to grips with whatever demons he's dealing with and the darkness of it, and I hope that he has a chance to conquer those demons. Uh, I hope that this isn't the last chapter. Um, the brother inspires me. He's in heavy rotation 
on my gym playlist. Uh, number one, there's the energy of it. But number two, the speaking and the confidence of what he was using to fight with. And I think for that moment when he was allowed to use that particular uh, platform as a manner of expressing and coming out and standing, I think he was able to cope. But when that came to an end and then there's nothing left but to look at where what's there, it's like anything else. You can distract yourself for so long and then you've got to confront it. I simply want to bring to the attention of the black community, those who will listen, that we need to heal as, a, as individuals and as a collective. We need to heal. Um, my prayers go out to this brother, his family. This, this man has uh, children. I'm not sure if he and his wife are still married. I know they went through some things and it, it was on the verge of divorce, um, which can be expected with everything that was going on. Uh, but there are still some people out there I know that love him. Um, keep him lifted, you know. Uh, this is one of those things where you come in and talk about how you feel about him, whether where he ranks with you as far as rappers and all that stuff like that. This is about a brother that gave the world a part of him that showed us so much of what we needed to see and most of us missed it. I hope now at this point we can start to look because see, he's the visual representation of a universal truth when it comes to blacks. And we need to deal with this thing. We need to heal. That's my challenge to you right now today is that if you need help, reach out to someone so that you can get the help you need. These fights can't be fought alone. I am a professional. I've been doing this thing for years and I have somebody, well actually more than one person I can go to on a professional level that can help me decompress, help me process. And so if I need it, then I think everybody has to acknowledge that at some point that's necessary. Convincing yourself that you're tough enough to deal with things or push you through it because we're built like that. The problem is every time you push through something without coping with it, you compress it. And you know what happens? The more you compress something, the more explosive it becomes. And eventually when it's triggered, bad things happen. We've got to deal with that. There's so much more that comes along with it that I'm not going to get into, uh, but I just, because I, I don't want to drag this, I don't want this to really be enough to where everybody can watch it without feeling, oh my God, it's going too long, so I'm going to leave it here, but we need to heal. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great weekend. Keep that brother lifted. And and we'll with talk. a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Uh, people talk Real about talk, it, like throwing shots. All of the elements.